Prince Mount Zion family, I pray that you're well on today. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thanking God for being back into the house of the Lord yet one more time. God's blessings to you. Amen. We thank God for all of you. Amen. This morning on the Sunday morning on August 22nd, 2021. I hope that you came here to worship because I came here to worship the Lord. I hope that you did as well. Amen. Just thanking God for being here in this place even right now. In the midst of where we are, we know there's a lot of movement and a lot of things that are going on, but I want us to get focused and get our minds attuned and focused to why we're here. We're not here for conversation. We're not here for side conversation. We're not here for any of that, but we are here in order to praise the Lord. And so with that, we want to make sure that we are centered in the midst of where we are. So in the midst of where we are, let's just start beginning the process of just getting our minds clear of any clutter, of any spiritual immaturity, of anything that may get us at a place or not bring us to the place in God's presence for worship on today. We thank God again for what he's going to do, amen, in the midst of where, again, we are. Again, first time Zion, again, it, it is the fourth Sunday, amen, the five Sundays in the month of August. I just thank God for seeing you here. Though there'll be others that will be coming in the midst of worship on today, but we're just glad to be in the house yet one more time. Amen. Amen. So, before we allow and, and move toward uh, the uh, mass choir coming and bring selections, amen, let us make sure we consecrate this moment. Why is this important, Pastor? Before we go into the place of worship, we must seek the one that we are worshiping. The one in the person of God. Jesus Christ, our Lord. And with that, this is why it's so important to consecrate the moment. Scripturally, we see this consistently. That before anything was moved into, before anything was moved, before any hallelujah shout was made, the moment was consecrated. Solomon prayed to consecrate the temple. Jesus, before he even went to the cross, consecrated that moment before he was arrested. What does this allow us to do? It allows us to pause. It allows us to think of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It allows us to be still and know that he is God. So I want you to get your, get your mind of it's not because Pastor Hank would say it, but because you just love God that much. Let's get our minds attuned together as we move into this center place and centerpiece of the worship experience. Pray with me, if you will. Most eternal and all wise God of Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this moment. Thank you, Lord, that you allowed us to wake up this morning. Got us started on our way over. Lord, we thank you, thank you, Lord, for bringing us to the house. Some of us brought ailments here. Some of us brought cares of last week here. However, Lord, we made it here. Your grace and mercy allowed us to do that. And since we're here, Lord, we want to make the most out of this experience. So, Lord, we pray for every element that's in the room right now. Every heart that is still bereaved, Lord, we pray for them right now. Lord, we pray for the things that we are thinking about for next week, but we put that aside, Lord, because we want to focus on you. Even your word has told us, why should we worry about tomorrow? Because tomorrow has enough worries of its own. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, the Lord, this place that you consecrated on first and outside, that we're here to worship you in spirit and in truth. We're here to worship you, Lord, because you're just a good God. We're here to worship you, Lord, because you've done wonderful things for us, whereof we are glad. We worship you, Lord, because the doors of the church are open. We worship you, Lord. 
because you're just a good God. We worship you because, Lord, you've been so good to us. We worship you, Lord, because you have given us the mustard seed of faith. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you usher in your Holy Spirit. Let it blow in from the south, east, north, and west into this place. If there's someone here, Lord, that comes into these doors that does not know you in the free parts of their sins, oh God, they will come to know you on today. Lord, this is your worship. For we came to worship you. Not form, not fashion, oh God. But we came to worship you. So as we came in the doors, we come to worship you, Lord. Not because of what we have on, Lord, but we just came to worship you. We clear the air, Lord, right now. We feel your spirit doing it right now. We clear the air, Lord, so that we can see and have a better vision towards you. For truly, as David said, I will look unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord, the one who made heaven and earth. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, bless Lord, uh, Brother Collins, O oh Lord, uh, our musicians, O oh Lord, uh, our Brother Jordan, O oh God, and also our, our mass choir. Bless the ushers on the floor. Bless the congregants that are here and those that will be coming in. Because God, we're in your holy place. We're in your holy assembly, O oh Lord. So whatever it is done, Lord, under the auspices of the time you've given us, that we do it in excellence to the magnification and exaltation of you and your son, Jesus the Christ. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we honor you. Make this service what you would have it to be. Because you're worthy, Lord, to be praised. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For this worship experience. Thank you for all that you continue to do. Bless us now and keep us. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And amen. Amen. Right now we're going to have worship. Amen. Please be participatory. Amen. Brother Collins is mad.
Amen. We thank God on today, amen, for just truly being blessed, amen. And I hope that you're blessed, amen, in order to be a blessing on today, amen. We thank God for being in worship, amen, just trying to get all this technology and everything else situated, amen. There we go, amen. We thank God for all of you in the midst of worship on today. It's good to be able to praise the Lord, to come into his house, and to be able to have, amen, worship, and a place to come in order to worship, amen. We thank God for all of you on this morning, amen. I ask that you stand with me, amen, in the reading of God's word. And all month long, we have been in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. And our focus today is going to be on verses 23 through 31. And when you have it, amen, say amen. If you don't, say wait for me. Amen. Amen. As we can get there together. Amen. <laughs> Hebrews 11. Beginning at verse 23. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born, because they saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated, along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded, regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger, Persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. And when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies. One sixty two pass me back.
night on this morning. Truly, the Lord will not pass us by. Amen. Truly, as we continue and move on in this world, we can know that truly the Lord is beside us. Not in heaven, but we. We thank God for where we are and how God still keeps us. And it's right there. As much wrong as we have done, he still doesn't pass us by. Amen. We thank God on today. Amen. For just worship for you, ma'am, and sir. Amen. For those that keep coming in these doors. Amen. Amen. As we continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Uh, if there are any first time visitors to First Mount Zion, this is your first time coming into these walls for worship. We ask that you stand and remain standing. Amen. Any first time visitors, first time guests, amen. 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 We're all at home on today. Amen. Because of the pandemic, we don't have our passing of the peace, but I just want you to turn to somebody that you haven't seen and just say, glad to see you in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Glad to see all of you in the name of the Lord. God's blessings to you all. Amen. Again, I feel good this morning. Amen. And I pray that you came. Amen. With a free mind and a free spirit and a free heart to praise a God who gave us freedom through his salvation. Amen. Amen. It's just good to be in the house. Amen. Of God. Amen. Sometimes I get kid like a kid. Amen. I just remember uh, growing up. Amen. Going to church and Sunday home. I couldn't wait to get to church. Amen. Couldn't wait to get to church because not only just the, the, the environment, but just being able to connect and fellowship one with another. That's what this is about. Amen. In worshiping the true and the living God. This pastor is going to step aside for just a second. Amen. Amen. And going to allow for uh, mass choir and the musicians to amen bless and song. We thank God again for Brother Collins. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. For being with us. Amen. Again on the day. Amen. Brother Jordan Floyd and our mass choir. Amen. God's blessing to you. Amen. As y'all continue to push forward in the name of the Lord. Let me step to the side. Amen. So we can be blessed in song. Amen. By our mass choir. Amen.
First Mount Zion Baptist Church gave out more than 60 book bags. We need to send prayers for Brother Antonio Adams. He's having a procedure on his heart tomorrow. To the Mass Choir, the Youth Department, Reverend Hagwood, and the First Mount Zion Church family, my heart is full of thanks and unending appreciation for your acts of kindness during the loss of my brother. Your prayers, your calls, and your condolences will never be forgotten. Thank you so much. Amen. The Deaconess meeting following morning worship, the fifth Sunday, August 29th. Sunday school will remain virtual, and we will not have the nursery or the children's church open. We need to be cautious regarding Delta variants of COVID-19. Masks are still being required. Mass choir practice will be Saturday, August 28th at 11 a.m. If you are interested in singing with the mass choir, please be present for rehearsal. Noon, day, and evening Bible study is back in session. Wednesday at noon is in person and conference call in the church fellowship hall. Evening Bible study is in person and Facebook Live in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. Please note, mass and social distancing will still be required for both sessions. The church's 93rd anniversary will be Sunday, September 12th during morning worship service. Reminders, all members are asked to donate $93. Revival will start Monday, September 13th. The food pantry is still open Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. If you know of any sick and shut-in members, please call the church office. If you have any announcements, please get them to the church office by 11.30 a.m. on Wednesday morning. All ministries are asked to turn in your 2022 officers and leaders to the church office secretary, Judy Ware, by September 12, 2021. The marquee pledges still are being accepted through September the 1st. And when exiting today, the church after service, please use the exit doors on each side of the pulpit when you leave. That concludes our announcement. The thought I'd like to leave with you all today, be kind to one another, yes. tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even yes. as God and Christ forgive us. Thank you. Yes. Amen. 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 First of all, time, family, amen. Just keep in mind all the announcements, amen, that have been read, amen, on today. Amen. Uh, Sister Cookie, we are still continuing to pray for you. Amen. And just know that your church family is always here and surrounding you. And anyone who's traveling in the season of bereavement, uh, one of the things I'm learning more and more, and if a pastor is not learning, you need to go ahead and fire me now. Amen. Seriously. Amen. I'm saying that. Uh, if I'm not continuously learning, amen, and growing from the perspective of how church is done, amen, and what church means. It's not just Sunday morning. Amen. It's the community of faith. 24-7. Amen. That's the only way I can put it. Amen. And truly being able to connect one with another. Please remember that, ma'am and sir, that you have, it's not just you in the building. You are surrounded by those of like mind in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And because of that, yeah. you are connected not only to your blood family, but also to your blood family. Somebody can get that in a minute. Amen. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. Amen. And so because of that, that's why it's so important that we fellowship one with another and truly embody the character of Jesus Christ in everything that we do. So please keep that in mind. Amen. I'm always learning that. And I'm very sensitive to it. Amen. Because life truly is fleeting. Amen. And it moves so quickly. And so with that, we must be sensitive to the ebbs and flows of life know that we still serve one common true and living God through Jesus Christ and that's how we're connected together. That helps us through our pain, helps us through our sorrow, helps us to love one another, helps us to forgive one another. Amen. And 
lead us in the paths of righteousness for the namesake of Jesus the Christ. Amen. So let's just keep that in mind. I know it sounds basic. I know it sounds central, a central tenet of the Christian faith. But I honestly believe that that's what holds the church together. Amen. It holds the church together as we move forward. Amen. You've heard the announcements that have been read. Um, a couple of reminders I'm going to give. Um, one, you will be getting a net very soon. I've uh, heard uh, church anniversary will have it during our morning worship. Um, working on speakers and so forth, both church anniversary and for uh, our revival. Revival will be three nights, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Amen. So that will be, I think, the 13th, 14th, and the 15th. Amen. So please keep that in mind. Amen. Um, I'm working on that now as we speak to get uh, uh, procure speakers and things of that nature. And I'm, I'm prayerful by the time I get to next week. Uh, I should have everybody. End of next week, I should have everything locked down and to give you names of who will be coming. Amen. For uh, for speaking for our church anniversary as well as for our revival. We still are going to have them. Amen. And we're going to do them, amen, in person. Uh, last year, because of the pandemic, we had revival and church anniversary right there in that vestibule. Amen. Virtually. Uh, that's the way we actually did it. Amen. And, um, and this year, we will actually try to have it physically in person um, here in the church. Of course, just practicing everything from uh, the aspect of prevention uh, for COVID-19. So this is a hand sanitizer mask and so forth. So just be in mind, you'll be hearing more about that in the weeks to come. Again, we want to thank everyone for participating last week when we had the deacon ordination service. Amen. Just awesome. Amen. Um, Dr. Benny Irwin, um, we had our executive UMBA meeting yesterday, which all that is virtual because uh, there's just too many churches. Amen. To be able to try to congregate in one place. So um, um, I was on the call yesterday and uh, Dr. Betty Irwin mentioned First Mount Zion. Amen. She mentioned us because she always talks about what's going on in the association. Amen. The church is in the association. And she specifically mentioned our ordination service. Amen. Because she has a list of things that she's doing. She's going from church to church. And then also pastoring her own church. Amen. So she's going through all, the, all that. And she made a point uh, to recognize, amen, our ordination and specifically uh, our first uh, female deacon of First Mount Zion. Uh, Melissa Adams went through that aspect. That was part of her minutes that she read on yesterday. So I wanted the church to know that. Amen. From that perspective, please, ma'am and sir, you'll be getting more information. You will be able to start to really move quickly. Um, a lot of things are still virtual, but um, the annual sessions will be coming up very, very soon in September. Um, and so uh, you'll be getting information on that. We've got, I think we're starting to get details on that. It should be in the minutes that I just sent to Sister Ware on yesterday and, um, and to get all the details in regards to the passage to you. So if you want to stream online to see it, that you'll be able to do so. And if there is an in-person that you can go, if you wish to go, go to the in-person worship uh, during the time of our annual session. So with that, those are announcements, of course, that I have. Please keep in mind everything that has been uh, read. Also, our sitting shut-in list that will be read shortly. Um, in regards to that, please, ma'am and sir, uh, I, I want you to give a hand clap of praise, amen, for our brother Emmanuel Wilson. Amen. Just give a hand clap of praise for him. I, I, the reason why is I, I want you all to re realize that we're still working through this technology. We're still trying to figure things out. We're learning as we go in that regard. And why am I saying this? I, I'm saying this because a lot of people want things instantaneous. You want things now. I understand that. However, when things are new, it's new. So you gotta learn. Amen. So I ask that we give patience, amen, to our sight and our sound area, because it's not just sound anymore, it's sight as well. So we gotta make sure that we give uh, give Brother Wilson and those that will be helping him give them space in order to operate and work and patience in that regard. Please know that Emmanuel has a lot of experience in doing this. Matter of fact, he has over about 15 years, really, amen, of experience doing this. He's been doing this since he was a teenager. And so he's been learning as he's gone, gone and now he's uh, in his mid-30s, and he's still learning things, but he also has a wealth of knowledge of what he does professionally relates to what uh, what we're seeing, amen. So he, just give, give 
them space and give them time and at least be patient in that regard. Uh, pastor's been working from uh, Old Delhi right here. Amen. That's my laptop. Amen. Uh, old uh, Press the desk, if you hear me call that too. But, um, but I've been working from that from the Facebook Live perspective. At some point, I'm going to move away from this for morning worship. Amen. We'll, I'll probably still have it for Bible study and I'll probably still have it for, um, for Sunday school. Uh, but uh, I'm trying to move away from it for morning worship. They're still working back there to figure out all the pieces for sound and all this with regards to it uh, and so forth. And at some point, what you see on the screens right now, this is eventually what you can see on Facebook. Amen. You won't see what you're seeing right now. The side view that looks underneath the pastor, you see what he's got in his left pocket. Amen. And you can laugh, it's fine, it's okay. Amen. Amen. Uh, but but you will see what you see on the screen. And so this is why it's important that we just be patient in that regard. Remember that we're working through these things. And especially remember we're working under the conditions of the pandemic. So because of that, this is why we just ask for patience in that regard. So please, man, please, sir, when you see, amen, uh, anyone in that tech room, Brother Emmanuel, amen, uh, uh, Brother Keenan, when he's back there, amen, not myself, but, uh, but, but uh, uh, but Brother Keenan, when you see him there, amen, or any, any of the kids, amen, because they're learning this stuff quick, amen. The teenagers are the ones that are really picking the stuff up uh, because they are learning it fast and they're helping, uh, they're helping the Emmanuel go through that process, amen. Truly, uh, when you really think about it, think about the children, amen, and think about how they're learning all these pieces and parts. When we say that the children are not, are not the church of the future, they're the church of the present. Amen. And they are helping already. Amen. Train up a child in the way that he or she should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. That's scripture. Amen. So this is why it's so important that we get them engaged into the process as well. So man and sir, amen. When you see anyone that sight and sound, just tell them thank you. Amen. And say we're praying for you. Whatever possible help that you may need. Amen. Just, we'll try to float it your way. But we're working towards that. Just be patient with us. And we'll continue to be working on this because God is truly not done with us yet. Amen. Amen. Um, again, those are the announcements that I have. Please keep in mind, church anniversary and also the 777 campaign. Again, every day, every Sunday specifically, again, if you come into the church, that drop box back there, that tithe box that you see back there, we want you to drop your $7. Amen. Um, for those who don't know, the 777 campaign is that we are asking every member just to give $7 and above and beyond the tithes and offerings, amen, uh, each Sunday, each Sunday, and just put it in that box. And our prayer is, is that as we stretch through the years, that we're going to be able to, one, pay this church off, two, to be able to get some things done that we need around the church. And that's over the course of the next seven years. So, ma'am and sir, please be uh, now more cognizant of it. Again, your pastor went ahead and wrote a $365 check the first day. And I did that. Now, you might not be able to do that, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, let's make a commitment to this church. Amen. Because if we continue to pay things off, it's going to be better for us to do ministry down the road and for the future. So, ma'am and sir, Thank you for what you're continuing to do. This is going to be going on, amen, for the next seven years. So every every Sunday, keep in mind that $7 of love beyond times and offerings, just lay that aside and put that in the, uh, in the box, amen. They're offering um, envelopes that are right there as well. Keep in mind that $7 is not a lot, amen. You, you spend that, you spend double of that on one lunch. Amen. You spend double of that on one lunch, easily, easily. So just keep that in mind as we continue to push the word of God forward and ministry forward in this place first mile outside. Amen. Uh, and don't, all the other announcements have been read. Uh, I'm not going to go through them any further uh, from that regard. Please remember Mass Choir Rehearsal and also New Day and um, Evening Bible Study is live and also uh, Conference Call Live with New Day and also on, uh, on Facebook Live with regards to 7 p.m. We're having an awesome study. Uh, I'm looking around to see if Sister Wilson is here. Amen. Uh, I don't see her. But uh, we're in, in the evening Bible study. We are studying the book of Acts. We're in the book of Acts. And uh, you can join us again online or, um, per, uh, or here. Please make sure that you come on 7 p.m. If you're coming to Bible study, come through the side door over here. Amen. Because we are in the sanctuary. We want to make sure that we get everyone in because normally we keep those doors. Lock 
Amen. Because we're here during the evening hours. Amen. Again, it's good to see everyone on this Sunday. Amen. During the time of the pandemic, amen, we, amen, were still doing work. Amen. Not only physical work in the church, but doing the evangelism work of the church. And we have two new members. Amen. And we want to fellowship in on today. Amen. To First Lives Baptist Baptist Church. Amen. We ask for them, amen, to come and ask for Amen. This is Rita Adams to come this time. Manifest 
uh, what God is doing in your life, amen, as you continue to make that up, is that what God is manifesting you, amen, in this place called First Time Zion. So we thank you, sir, amen, find the place, amen. I know folks have been on for us, and I a couple other ministries who be trying to tap on you, amen, if they haven't tapped you already, amen. But uh, at the same time, you find that place where God is. So glad to have you. Love the Lord, sir. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm your pastor, Reverend Eshaw Hagelin. Amen. You can ask him about the round time. Amen. If you hear a bad word, just tell me about it. And I'll see it. I'll see it to my demons. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. Again, go up with the first time behind. Again, love the Lord. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Let's give a hand clap of praise. Amen. Lord, I remember. Amen. We just ask one of the house was around here in the fellowship, but we will not do that due to the circumstances of COVID. Amen. But after service, if you see them, amen, you just tell them that you love them. Welcome to the first mile time. Welcome to the whole, welcome to the family, and to be able to engage them. Amen. In the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. We love you, little Amen. God, you take your seat. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand out of praise for what he continues to do. First time time, you'll be surprised. You'll be so surprised on the amount of work that's done. Amen. And I'm one that believes that at some point a seed is going to manifest. Seed is going to long as you keep planting. At some point, fruit's going to grow. Something's going to grow if you keep planting seed. And so with that, that's why we continue to do what we do because truly. That's what we're doing. Spray the seed. And we know it will catch and it will grow. And it will manifest into growth even within our church spiritually as well as physically over time. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, amen, we do have, amen, um, the Deacon Williams, David Williams, going to come at this time and give an emphasis on our sick and shut-in. And I'm going to ask him to, to, to remain Amen. And lead us to the throne of grace as well. Amen. to stand where you are, you may sit, amen, let the Spirit lead you in regards to that, amen, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's just Bonnie, I think she's at home, amen, I think she's at home now, if I'm not mistaken, amen, that's the word I had gotten this week, if I'm wrong, please let me know, amen, my understanding she's at home, I think she received, my wife received a text actually from her, saying she was back, uh, back at home, she was out of the hospital, amen, amen. The words of prayer truly are so important to the life and faith that we have 
Son, Jesus Christ. That we should pray all pray without ceasing. And it's important for us to remember that because in these days and times, we need to be praying. Oh, Lord, yes, we do. We need to be praying. Because there's so much going on in the world. As Deacon Williams comes and he leads us to the throne of grace, cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. How do you do that? You just go to the throne of grace and pray. Pray for your family. Pray for yourself. Pray for others, your church family. Pray for our church in general. Pray for the city. Pray for our nation. Pray for those in Afghanistan. Pray for those in Haiti right now. They're going through it. Across the world, someone needs prayer. And as the Williams comes, he will lead us to the throne of praise. I just been in the room to add Brother Clark, Evangelist Clark, to the prayer meeting. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, we realize you sit high, but you look low. Thank you for looking down on first my mind this morning. Because we need you, Heavenly Father. Because we are going through.
God for being able to have a prayer. Amen. What we know to God, spirit and truth. Amen. We thank you all, amen. Just thank God for this time of our worship where we're able to give a portion back to God in the form of tithes and offerings, which He's given to us in the form of countless, countless blessings that are too numerous for us to even name and sometimes even to receive. Amen. Amen. In the midst of giving, amen, on today. I always have to make sure we make appeal online as well. And for those that wish to give online, amen, you can go to our website at First Mount Zion. That's F-I-R-S-T M-T-Z-I-O-N dot com. Amen. You can hit the donate button in the upper right hand corner that leads you to the PayPal app and you can give by way of your debit card or credit card there. Also, we have Gimlify on the smartphone. Smartphone app Givelify and find First Mount Zion there, amen, and you can give, amen, via Givelify that way, amen, that has been my form of giving here lately, amen, so, amen, just easy, amen, I can just go there and click it, it's done, amen, I don't have to worry about it, amen, and make sure that all gets funneled in, and also, we have a Dropbox here at First Mount Zion during the course of the week, uh, at the side door, amen, you can just drop your tithes and offerings there in the envelope, we make sure to get them in the drop box is locked. So, amen, you can uh, make sure that it, you know that it is secure and you can give uh, appropriately there. And also, if you're not making it to worship, amen, uh, and you want someone to come and get your tithes and offerings from your home, we will be more than glad to do so. Just contact us here at the church, amen, by phone, 704-332-8335, amen, just uh, contact us if no one else the phone, just leave a message, we'll be back with you, amen, and we'll organize the time when you come and get your tithes and offerings, amen. We thank God for you during the course of where we are, Our trustees are already in place, amen, I ask that you stand with me at this time, amen, as we go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Most eternal and all wise God and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for this time of giving, that we give back a portion of to you, O Lord, in the form of tithes and offerings, O God. Lord, you said, bring ye uh, all of the tithes into the storehouse, that it may be meat in my house, yes. O Lord. And you said, trust me in this, and that, Lord, that, that you that trust you in it, Lord, to the point where that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour, pour us out a blessing that we wouldn't have room enough to receive. So we ask, Father, that we are obedient, Lord, to your word, obedient in faith. You've done so much. For us, oh Lord, there's no way, Lord, we can pay you. That's an insult, oh God. 
But what we want to do is give resources to the kingdom as you have stipulated, God, in order that we can do ministry in this place called First Mount Zion. We ask Lord, that you bless those who give, bless those of our heart to give, but may not have it at this time. Lord, give provision where there's lack, and allow us, Lord, to see your glory as we move in the days ahead. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God as the trustees will serve you at this time. Amen.
a building not made by man's hands. I, I don't know if y'all heard it, Deacon Clark. I, I don't know if you heard it. It's a building not made by man's hands. See, 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 the architects couldn't do it. A man-made architect can't build it. It can't be made by your hand. You can be the best brick mason or the best stone mason, but you can't make it with your hands. There's a building not made by hands.
somebody, and some you may, you may know of their ailments and things of that nature. But continue to be in prayer that God will be Jehovah Jireh, provider, that he will be Jehovah Rapha. He will be a healer, amen, in their situation, amen, to ease the aspect of their pain and ailment, amen. Amen. Today, amen, part four, amen, of this series of examples of faith, amen. And I pray that this has been a blessing to you, at least for the first three parts. If so, just give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. We have two more parts, one today and one next Sunday, and God will move us, amen. Which reads this way, Hebrews 11, verse 23. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child. And they were not afraid of the king's edict. Go down a little bit further. Verse number 25. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God. Rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Hmm. Verse 28, by faith he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. Verse 31, by faith the prostitute Rahab because she welcomed the spy was not killed with those who were disobedient. Hmm. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word, sanctified to the deepest roots of our heart. You may be seated in the presence of God. <coughs> Let us pray. Most eternal and wise God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for this word in faith. We ask, Lord, that you remove John. It's never been about me, Lord. It's always been about you. Let this word go forward, O oh Lord. And as the psalmist even said, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and surely my redeemer. Thank you, Lord, for this fourth installment of this sermon series, Examples of Faith. Allow it, allow it to carry us forward in the days ahead. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, church, Examples of Faith, part number four. Examples of Faith, part number four. Church, there's a story about a blind girl. One day, uh, 
she was caught in a fire on the 10th floor of the building she lived in. She made her way to a window, but she couldn't see anything. She was blind. She felt the heat. Matter of fact, smelled smoke of the fire. And then she heard a fireman yell, jump, jump. She said, hmm, I'm scared to jump. I can't see. The fireman said, if you don't jump, you're going to die. Take the risk and jump. Now, church, it's a bad enough, it's bad enough to jump from 10 stories high. But to jump when you can't see where you are jumping, that's terrible. And in the midst of the chaos, confusion, trepidation, she heard another voice saying, darling, jump, I've got you. And she smiled and said, daddy, I'll jump. And first about Zion, I hope that you hear something within the introduction of the sermon this morning. I pray that you recognize the familiarity in the voice that is calling you. I sincerely hope, First Mount Zion, that you hear the voice that has been calling your name for as long as you have lived and been in existence. I, 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 I pray, my prayer uh, and, 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 and hope is that you hear the voice of Jesus Christ inviting you, inviting me, inviting all of us to jump. Church, he knows we are nervous, but still jump. He knows that you are scared. But just jump. He knows that you have backslided more than 100 times. But just jump. He knows that you are the one who set the fire to your own life and tried to destroy it. But he still is telling you, jump. Jesus Christ knows every manner of regret that you have about your life. But just jump. Can I take it to the old hymn book this morning? Somebody talk to me this morning. I'm going to preach today. Jesus knows all about our troubles. He will guide us till the day is done. There's not a friend Woo! like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. And church, and since he's your friend, since he is your comforter, since he is a rock in a weary land, since he is the way that makes that makes a way out of no way, since he makes ways out of no ways, then muster up your mustard seed of faith and just jump. Church, this is where God has me on this pericope of scripture. In Hebrews 11, because church, in the midst of COVID, in the midst of racial injustice, in the midst of all this calamity that we see, people not being human, God is trying to tell this church, are you ready to jump? Are you ready to be the church that I've called you to be? Just jump. Are you going to be held back by the addictions of your past? No, just jump. But yet and still, some of us still hold on, hold on to a covenant spirit. Thinking that we can stay right where we are and not listen to the advice of the fireman. 
that says that if you don't jump, you're going to die. And I'm here to tell us, church, that it's not about necessarily physical death. That just brings the allegory and, and the connection to the story to a place of reckoning for us. The question becomes is when the fire is burning and you don't have anywhere else to go, are you going to be able to listen to the voice of God and hear God's voice, hear Christ calling you, hear the Holy Spirit moving you, and take your tail and jump? Church, think about this. If Martin Luther King wouldn't have jumped, where would we be today? If Harry Tubman wouldn't have jumped, 70 plus slaves would not have made it to freedom. If certain people wouldn't have jumped, you wouldn't have went to school. Certain people wouldn't have jumped or made you, encouraged you to jump. The cancer would have ended your life. But it takes jumping, church, to move to the next dimension. Why are you talking about this, preacher? Why are you going into the aspect of jumping? Because what jumping does, it says that, that the one that's going to catch you has said that he will be there regardless. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. So the aspect of jumping means that you're jumping away from something that would ultimately end your dreams and also what God has in store for you. Sometimes, church, the church needs to jump. Can I go there this morning? Sometimes the church needs to jump to a new agenda. Sometimes the church needs to jump into the 21st century. Sometimes the church just needs to jump into what's new because that's what God has called us to. And why church? Because the lifeblood of context of ministry which we project means that God is doing something now. So why reflect on old stuff? Why try to put new wine in old wine skins? We can't do it. What did God tell the prophet Isaiah to tell the people of Israel? Stop holding on to the past. Stop holding on to old things. See, I am doing a new thing. Don't you see it? Don't you perceive it? God is doing something new. And when we come to the realization of, of God doing something new and we want to follow God, it's going to take us, take the faith that we have in order to jump and to move in the direction that God is calling us to move. And the question, church, that we've been dealing with for this entire series is what should real faith in Jesus Christ move us toward? What should real faith in Jesus Christ move us toward? Well, church, for this section of the sermon, to that question of what should real faith in Jesus Christ move us toward, my first point this morning is that it should move us to jumping away from the spiritual incarceration that contrary spirits want us to move toward. Yeah, yeah. Let me read that again. Yeah. Jumping away from the spiritual incarceration that contrary spirits want us to move toward. Yeah, yeah. Well, church, as we go into this text of scripture, we're hearing in the Verse 23 through 26, the story about Moses. And if you've been, been in the church at least for a little while, some of you know about Moses. Go ahead and you can open up Exodus when you get home. But what it, what's there is that Moses at his birth, he was 
born in Egypt. And the Israelites were in slavery. And so an edict went out from Pharaoh, and if you read this in the first chapter of Exodus, where eventually it says there was a Pharaoh who rose up in Egypt who knew not Joseph. Now remember, Joseph was the one who became second in command of Egypt, who happened to be an Israelite that kept everybody from starving to death. And so because of that, generations passed. And then there rose a king, a Pharaoh in Egypt, who didn't know Joseph. Can I stop here for a second? I read somewhere that those who forget their past are condemned to repeat it. That is not a biblical quote, that is a historical quote. And the reality becomes, church, is that there are some folk who raise up in their generation not reading what the history books have told us over time and then end up repeating the same old mess. Whether it's in church, whether it's in government, whether it's in whatever, and end up reciprocating demonistic thoughts that ultimately kill the very same people that it was intended to kill back then. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is, I want you to look around your world right now. And this week has really been a downtrodden to me, but I've been praying about it. I'm sitting here, and I was born in 75, in 1975. I'll tell my age, that's all right. And at the end of the day, I'm looking at what's going on in Afghanistan, and I'm saying to myself, is this not Saigon of Vietnam all over again? Are you kidding me? That's exactly what happened in between 1973 and 1975, is that people were trying to get to some level of freedom, and folks turned their backs on them. And I'm looking at what's going on in Afghanistan, and I'm saying, like, 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 like the late Deacon Sue, my Lord, my Lord. Looking around, I'm saying, what has our world come to? To the point where we have turned our back on humanity. And what's amazing, church, is that there's so much that we got to go back to God with. There's so much our government has to go back to God with because of what we're seeing in the world. I wanted to make a quick pit stop there so you can see the relation. But the reality becomes, church, is that what's going on there, again, could take is putting spiritual incarceration not only on the people that are there, but also on us. Let me help us. We need to do the right thing always. Whatever God's righteousness has said to do, we must do that always. And when you don't do it, what you see on CNN is what happens when we don't do it. Let me move, let me move, further, let me move further. Within this church, within Moses, Pharaoh said, kill all these boys. Kill all the Hebrew boys. They're growing too much. They're multiplying too much. They're getting larger and bigger too much. And church is amazing with all the critical race theory that we're seeing in the world today is that there is voter suppression, all types of other suppression, trying to keep you away from stimulus checks and a host of other things that are going on in the world because folks are afraid of the dynamics of what can't change. What's happening in this world, and it's specifically in the United States right now, is that the minorities are becoming the majority. That's the reality. And the 2020 census has told us this. But when you have diabolical politicians that don't think about the aspect of the world, say they're Christians but act like they're Pharisees, it's amazing to me how you can say that I praise God, but you're willing to not give resources to people that you know are disenfranchised. And so with this, it's a form of genocide. Form of homicide. 
form of trying to kill folks off. And so, church, this is what's happening with Moses. Moses is nothing but a baby. His parents had to hide them for three months. And ultimately, they pitched a, a basket, put some tar pitch on it, put it on the Nile River and floated it, and prayed that somebody would find this child so that he wouldn't be killed. And the basket folks to all, who, who else's house? Pharaoh's house. And Pharaoh's daughter sees the basket, hears Moses crying, pulls him up, and says, this must be one of the Hebrew children. Now watch this. She knows that this is one of the Hebrew children. She knows that her daddy is trying to kill all the Hebrew boys. But she says, no, I'm going to take him to my house and raise him as my own. And what's amazing, church, is that when folks are trying to do you wrong, trying to do evil, God will pitch a basket, send you down a river, and the folk, you will end up in the enemy's hand, and the enemy will end up taking care of you because God already had it planned. Raised in the palace, 
best education, uh, trigonometry, and all the mathematics of Egypt, he still chose right over wrong, justice over injustice. And in this church, don't get so comfortable in luxury that you miss out on the promises of God. Can I help you? There's nothing wrong with having nice stuff. But when nice stuff turns to be your God, you got a problem. And that's what Moses didn't do. He made it a point. He said, no, this is not right. I don't care about all the glamour that I have. It doesn't matter. And this is my church, that we got to be careful to make sure we're jumping away from things that would spiritually incarcerate us. Because it's only a trick of the enemy to keep us from relying on faith of what we can't see. Faith in Jesus Christ to what we can't see. The substance of things hopeful. The evidence of things not seen. My second point, church. Again, to this question of what should real faith in Jesus Christ move us toward. Church, it should move us toward the greatness of Christ's divine mystery. Jumping toward the greatness of Christ's divine mystery. Church, when we get to verse 27, what we're seeing in these verses is where Moses begins the process of tying in some other things that the writer of Hebrews talks about. In verse 27 it says, By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover. And so, church, the reality becomes this. When you want to have a closer walk with God, when you want to have a closer walk with Jesus Christ, you will forsake those things that were in the past and begin the process of moving toward the unseen, moving toward a God that you know is there, but you haven't seen his face yet. And because of this church, that begins the process of us having a faith that begins to move away from worldly things. The reality is, church, is that there is a divine mystery in Jesus Christ. That is why faith is so important. Faith in and of itself is a divine mystery. Think about this, church. We all came to the belief of Jesus Christ in this room. Why? We came to faith because we believed what happened at the cross was a divine thing. We came up to realize the empty tomb was a divine thing. And because of all of this divinity that was tied to Jesus Christ, we came up in our minds and said, even though we weren't there, even though we didn't see it, there has to be something great about it, so I'm going to believe it. Church, this is why we're sitting in the greatness of Christ's mystery. And I was going through some verses and thinking about some of the things that Moses had gone through. And I kind of summed it up like this. Moses, uh, at some point, could see the greater mystery of God in light of his obedience to what he couldn't see and the miracles that came came to be because he obeyed. Church, it's amazing. Remember when you read in Exodus, there are ten plagues. And every plague was against an Egyptian god. And because the plagues ended in number ten, with again a plague that said all of the firstborn will be killed. But if you had the blood of the lamb yeah. that was sprinkled on your doorpost. Yeah. If you had the blood of the lamb yeah. that was sprinkled on your doorframe, yeah. that death would come, make a pit stop, and jump over your house yeah. and would 
keep on moving. And let me help you, church. When you begin to jump towards faith, jumping toward faith makes it a point for Jesus to make sure that if the death angel jumps over. They stretch you out in front of here that you won't experience the second death because at the end of the day you will be in paradise with Jesus Christ. This tie in church is tied to the obedience that Moses had. Now I have to go here. Remember when they finally let him go and they ended up at the Red Sea. They stayed at the Red Sea and they couldn't go through the water. It was too deep. And the Egyptian army was behind them. They were stuck between a rock and truly a hard place. And church, I need to help you with this. That the divinity of God, when it showcases itself enough times in your life, you come to depend on that mystery. You come to depend on that mystery of God. Because you figure, if it work one time, it'll work a second time. It'll work a third time. And matter of fact, if it worked three times, it must continue to work so it works into infinity. And church, let me help you. Moses got complaints from the Israelite church <laughs> of the Red Sea. And they begin complaining, why did you bring him out here to die? Why did you bring out? We, could, we would have been better off in Egypt. See, that's that's messed up thinking. It, it's, 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 it's messed up thinking when you begin to say that your life was better as a slave. Let me help you. When you begin to say that your life is better as a slave, as one that is indentured to another man. Moses hears all the complaints. And guess what he does? He starts to pray. Now, mind your church. He starts to pray. And as he prays, <laughs> Moses hears from God. And he says, that staff that you have been performing all my works with, take that staff and stretch it towards the sea. And God began to move in two directions. One, he was beginning to part the Red Sea in front of them. But also, he moved the presence of his spirit behind the people. And a sandstorm began and began to disrupt the Egyptian army. But it didn't touch the Israelites. Now I want to help you with something. After you get past one obstacle, church, God will present another when the other obstacle is still on your track trying to pull you down. Now the reality here is that God sent his spirit in two directions. One to part the Red Sea. The other to disrupt what you already had gotten out of when that thing was trying to get back to you. Now let me help you church. When all that was going on, Israel was just waiting. Y'all ain't ready yet. While God was working on the front end and God was working on the back end, the children of Israel didn't have to do anything. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying, church, when you have enough faith to leave it all with God, sometimes, church, you won't have to lift one finger. You won't have to do one thing. God will work in front of you, beside you, behind you, all around you. And when all the Negroes try to come up against you, God says, great is he that is in me, that he is in the world. And you will fit them all off. And you won't even lift one thing. Church, when we understand that God, through Jesus Christ, is a divine mystery that now supersedes any natural thing that we have seen or understand. Let me help you. Somebody in this room has experienced 
a doctor telling you this is probably it. You're going to leave this world. But you're still sitting here now. Divine mystery of Christ. You can't explain it. But what you know is you prayed about it. And you said, God, your will be done. And God's will was done. And it was divine mystery. And all you could say, if it had not been. Woo! If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have been dead and gone. And church, we need to understand and appreciate when we see these mystical things of God that we humble ourselves and we praise God right where we are and say, Lord, it was you. It could only have been you. And that's how good you are. Faith parts red seeds. Faith creates havoc for your enemies. Faith keeps you protected and you can sleep at night. Mm. Woo. Before I get to my third point, I have to read the scripture because God gave it to me. Just write it down. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You can write it down. But it says this. Verse 17 and 18. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. The mystery of God brings us into unseen eternal territory. Faith brings us there. My third point, and we're going to go take the state home. Again, what? Should real faith in Jesus Christ move us toward? Church, it should move us toward jumping into a victory without having to lift the finger to fight. Church, this is where I want to end on today. And I know you're asking, well, Pastor, you just talked about that. And yes, I did talk about that. But that was only one story. When we end this pericope of Scripture, it says that the prostitute Rahab, who lived in Jericho, when Moses didn't have the strength physically, he assigned Joshua to come into a place where now an army has been gathered. This was the first major battle that the Israelites would have to fight in order to get into the promised land. And church, I'm here to tell you huh, that when they sent the spies out, huh, there was a woman who was known as a harlot. Huh, there was a woman by the name of Rahab huh, who was a prostitute huh, in Jericho. Huh, but for some odd reason, huh, God led these spies to her house. Huh, and when they got to her house, huh, they told her, we are, in, we are the Israelites, and we're spying on the land, because God is going to give us this land, and get us into the promise. She began to believe, and she hid them, and made sure they had enough to eat, and enough to drink. Huh. Why are you saying this, preacher? Huh. I'm saying this, church, huh. to help us realize huh. it doesn't matter where you come from. Huh. It doesn't matter what you've done. Huh. It doesn't matter huh. what huh, you may have uh, committed in your life. Huh. But at some point, huh, you've got to make a choice huh, whether you wish to jump in victory huh, or jump into some other place huh, and not having to lift a finger. Huh. 
Watch this church. After they surveyed the land, God told them, march around the city of Jericho for seven days. On the first day, march around one time. On the second day, march one more time. For the next a third, fourth, fifth, and six days, march around one time. But on the seventh day, I want you to march around seven times. So they marched around seven times. And when the shofar blew, when the horn of God blew, the wall of Jericho came tumbling down. And church, I need you to understand that when you have the faith of the grain seed of the mustard seed, that you can just trust in the Lord. And eventually, as God tells you and instructs you to do what he's called you to do, your Jericho walls will come falling down. Your Jericho walls will come falling down. Any ailment you're dealing with comes falling down. Your financial issues come tumbling down. All these things that are keeping you away from the will of God come tumbling down. Faith, 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 and watch your walls come tumbling down. Stand here deep this morning. I'm done preaching. Church, faith, 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 it takes faith to lead a people, a nation, out of slavery. It takes faith to lead black folk out of Jim Crow. It takes faith. our loved ones. It takes faith. Church, this is what I'm a believer of. And I'm going to be dealing with this when I start writing my dissertation once I get there. I honestly and truly believe that many of the movements we see in our world right now, some are good, some are not so good. But when I look at a Black Lives Matter movement, I see one component that's missing. And that's Christ. I'm going to be honest. It's great to see the good work. But I still honestly believe that that movement doesn't have a true spiritual uh, power source. Why did the civil rights movement work? Because it was couched in the church. Yes, I know Jews and Muslims and a whole lot of other faiths came over, but it was couched in the church. Those meetings at night were in the church. And so I can call me old school all you want, but I am a believer that the movement of God was on that movement. Even with all the atrocities that people kill. Faith. Faith in Jesus. Faith. Let's get our minds and hearts ready to jump. To jump. There may be someone here who does not know Jesus Christ in the free part of the sins. You can jump over to the Lord's side. You can know Jesus while he may be found. Come as a candidate of baptism, Christian experience, and by letting you may come. Whatever your need, whatever your desire, God has to give.
thank God on today for what we have seen and what we have heard. Amen. On today. God's blessings to you. First Mount Zion family. Amen. Part four. We're going to part five next week. The last part, the last installment of the examples of faith. Continue to have faith. And don't be afraid to jump. Don't be afraid to jump. God will catch you and bring you into dimensions unseen that he wants to bring you into because of your mustard seed of faith. We thank God for you. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Please keep our uh, note of all the announcements this week and we'll continue to be motivated by the power and the love and majesty of Jesus Christ, our Lord. At this time, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this worship experience. Thank you for what you have done, O oh Lord, to help us with our faith. Lord, we're getting stronger. We're getting stronger, Lord. We sense your power. Because, Lord, if we believe just enough that, Lord, you'll do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. Thank you, Father, for this series of faith. For everything that we have heard, every song that has been sung, for every smile that has been given, for every kind word expressed, continue, oh Lord, to give us that resilience during the week. Then, Lord, we can come back to this house on next week if it be your will. Praise your name and spirit and the truth. We love the Lord and praise you in all things. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless into that day with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, the power to be glory and honor forever and forever. And the people of God say.